In this video, we'll be looking at trapezoids and isosceles trapezoids and their properties. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So if you notice the picture here, you only have one side, one set of pairs that are parallel to each other. The other two sides just connect and are not parallel to each other. So some vocabulary to go along with trapezoids is within a trapezoid, we have two bases. The bases are the parallel sides. And then we have two legs. The legs are the non-parallel sides. Sometimes a trapezoid may be facing up and down as well. It doesn't always have to be side to side. So for example, ah, messed up the picture there. If this was my trapezoid right here, and this side was parallel to this side, then this would be the base, and this would be the base, and these two sides would be the legs. Because the bases will always be the sides that are parallel to each other. And of course, these are base angles. Now, properties of a trapezoid. There are two of them for just normal trapezoids. First off, you have one pair of parallel sides. So this is what you should be writing on your, on your notes, is these properties. One pair of parallel sides. And secondly, we have two pairs of consecutive angles that are supplementary. In other words, 30 and 150, that's a pair of consecutive supplementary angles. And 100 and then 80, and that's a pair of consecutive supplementary angles because they add up to 180. Notice, this is different than parallelograms, because in parallelograms, these angles are supplementary, the 30 and the 150, and these angles are supplementary, but that's not true for a trapezoid, because trapezoids only have one set of parallel sides. So just these two sides, these two angles, and these two angles are supplementary. Notice, they still add up to 360 because it is a quadrilateral. All right, so let's look at an example here. First off, let's identify what our bases are. The bases are the parallel sides, so that's a base, and this is a base. So the other two sides are the legs. So the angles that go along the legs are the angles that are supplementary. So these two angles, angle B plus angle C, should add up to 180. So we don't know angle B, but we know angle C is 67. So we subtract 67 from 180 to get the angle B equals 113 degrees. Now, angle A and angle D are what go along the other leg. And those should add up to 180 as well. So 103, because that's angle A, plus angle D equals 180. Subtract to 103, so angle D equals 77 degrees. 77 and 113. You can even check this to see if these add to 360, and they do. Okay, every trapezoid has something called a mid a mid segment. The mid segment of a trapezoid is the segment joining the midpoints of the legs. So if I find the midpoint of each leg and connect those, I get the mid segment. Now the mid segment is parallel to both the bases. It's exactly in between them. It's the middle of them and mid-segment, the middle segment of the trapezoid. So just find the point, the midpoint of both legs. At any point, if the video is moving too fast, please pause it. Okay, so for a mid-segment of a trapezoid, the length of the mid-segment is the average of the bases. So if I want to find the length of this mid-segment, I just add the two bases and divide by two because that's how we find the average. So if this base was 10 and this base was 20, I would do 10 plus 20 divided by 2 equals 30 over 2, which equals 15. So that segment would be 15 long. So it's right in the middle, OK? All right, so let's try some examples out. We have our two bases. And this time it gives me my mid-segment. So the formula is x plus 17 over 2, because those are my bases, equals 13. Anytime you have a denominator, multiply it by the other side. So x plus 17 equals 26. And I'll get rid of the 2. Subtract 17, so x equals 9. Or you could have said, what do I do to get from 17 to 13? You go down 4. So you get down 4 again, and you get 9. Here, you have both of your bases, so 2.5 
plus 8.5 divided by 2 equals y. 2.5 plus 8.5 is 11, which divided by 2 is 5.5. So make sure you understand this formula. Base 1 plus base 2 divided by 2 gives you the mid-segment. And the mid-segment, as a reminder, is the segment that connects the midpoints of the legs. All right, last one we're going to do is mid-segment. So we start off the same. We add the bases. So x plus 11 plus the other base is 9. And really, these should be marked. So they're parallel, and this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. So the bases are x plus 11 plus 9. Divide by 2, because we have to find the average, equals x minus 20. Now try to recall, how do we move the 2? We multiply it to both sides. So x plus 11 plus 9 equals 2 times x minus 20. Now 11 plus 9, that's 20. And then 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times minus 20 is minus 40. So now we subtract x from both sides. We get 20 equals x minus 40, and then add 40. So x equals 60. So AB will be 60 plus 11 is 71. EF will be 60 minus 20, which is 40. All right, finally, let's look at isosceles trapezoids. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid that has congruent legs. So the bases aren't congruent, but the legs are congruent to each other. So the bases are still parallel, and the legs are the same. So properties of an isosceles trapezoid, first off, Legs are congruent. Secondly, the base angles, so the angles that go along each part of the base are congruent to each other. So notice this angle is on the same base as that angle, so they're congruent. And this angle is on the same base as this angle, so these angles are congruent. And notice these two angles will still be supplementary because it's still a trapezoid. All right, so let's try this out. If this is 42 for angle D, then angle C also has to be 42 degrees. Now these two angles are supplementary, so we know that angle A plus angle D has to equal 180 because it's a trapezoid. Angle A we don't know, but we know angle D is 42, so we subtract the 42, and angle A equals 138. And because it's an isosceles trapezoid, angle A and angle B are congruent, so angle B is also 138 degrees. Okay, so ask yourself now, well, let's, let's have you pause it and try to solve for the missing x and the missing angles and sides. All right, let's see how you did. So we got to see if these angles are congruent, and they are because it's an isosceles trapezoid, so 3x minus 5 equals x plus 7. Now let's solve it, subtract x, 2x minus 5 equals 7, add 5 to both sides. 2x equals 12, divide by 2, so x equals 6. So angle D will be 3 times 6 minus 5, which is 18 minus 5, which is 13 for angle D. Angle A and angle D are supplementary, so 180 minus 13 gives you 167. And finally, BC will be the same as AD, so 8 times 6 is going to be 48, so that will also be 48. Okay, one more property of an isosceles trapezoid. The diagonals are congruent to each other. So if it is an isosceles trapezoid, those diagonals are congruent. Now, they do not bisect each other like they did in a parallelogram, but they are congruent to each other, only in isosceles trapezoids. So I'm giving you AE. EC and DB. What do you notice about AE and EC? Well, AE is this part, EC is this part, and DB is the whole line. So AE plus EC equals 2DB. So 2x plus 3x equals 30. 5x equals 30. Divide by 5, so x equals 6. So make sure you realize that those diagonals can be set equal to each other. And we used two different things here because it was two parts of the diagonal equaled the whole. Okay, so here's a little diagram. We have our quadrilaterals, 
trapezoids break off, they're not part of the parallelogram family. And of course, isosceles trapezoids are part of the trapezoid family. So please do your homework and get some good practice, and have a great day.